everyone, welcome to a new week of maths learning. First thing I want you to do today is have a look at my model that I've drawn on the board. You might want to pause me briefly and have a little think about what values or what value or values that could represent. I probably gave you a little clue there. Okay, so give me a pause, jot that down or have a think in your head and then start me again. Okay. So I'm sure you all got it right. We've got one hole there, and it's divided into three, and this one is, so we're definitely looking at thirds, and we've got one third there. We could also say, couldn't we, that we've got three thirds. So all together, we've got one and a third, or three, four, four, thirds. And that's what you were working on at the end of last week. You were working on converting mixed numbers to improper fractions and improper fractions to mixed numbers. So we're going to push on with that. We're going to apply that while we're still practicing all our work with um, adding fractions. So today we're actually going to be adding mixed numbers to proper fractions where our answers go over a whole. So this is where it starts to get a little bit trickier. So, my first example, I'm going to stick with pizzas. No, I'm going to go with boxes of chocolates. Right, I have got one and a third boxes of chocolates left from Christmas. I haven't, that's a lie, I've eaten them all. But we're going to say I've got one and a third boxes of chocolates left. But Steve is a little bit greedier than me and he's only got a quarter of a box of chocolates left. That's probably more true. So how much chocolate do we have between us? And I want the answer as a mixed number. Okay, so this is a nice simple one to get us going. First thing I want you to realise, and this shows it very clearly, one and a third can be written as one plus a third. Okay, one. So this calculation we can write as one plus a third plus our quarter. Right. We're now going to park our one. We're going to just park it. We can't forget about it because it's part of the calculation. So it has to show up each time, but we're not going to do anything with it. So what's our next step? Well, we still need our one but we're not doing anything with it, we know that. Parked, over to one side. And now we're going to do the calculation we would normally do to add one third and one quarter. So I can see very quickly, and you should be able to now as well, that 12 would be um, a common multiple, the lowest common multiple of three and four. So I need to multiply three by four, so I need to multiply my numerator, and I need to multiply four by three. Okay, so that's um, work that you've already done and practiced. So that is going to give us, oops, we've still got our one, but we are left here with seven twelfths. Okay, so our answer, we can see very simply for that one, is one and seven twelfths. Okay, and that's how your answer should be written. Now, this is a really good step-by-step -step way to lay out your calculations so you don't lose any bits. That's why I've put a big pink square around my one, because what i found in the past is children park it and forget about it. Now, this step... It's probably a bit of an extra one. You're thinking, hmm, why do I need to do it? Why can't I just go from there? I can see that 7 twelfths and write that. Well, there is a reason, and you'll see it in a minute. Now, once you have practised and you're really confident, it will be different. You can choose which steps you actually write out. Um, but for now, I do want you to certainly start off recording all the steps. So that was a nice, simple one. The work you're going to be doing is a little bit harder than that because 
we're going to go over the hole. We started off with one hole, we've still got one hole, it's only our proper fraction, it's only the parts of the hole that's changed. But actually you're going beyond that today. So let's do another one. Okay, um, let's change our amounts of chocolate, shall we? I've got one and a half boxes now. And Steve has got two thirds. So we've still eaten more than me, assuming we started off with the same amount. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I am going to partition. I'm going to, um, this number, I'm going to separate the proper fraction from the integer or the whole number. So I'm going to say one plus one half plus two thirds. And I'm going to put that square around my one again so I don't forget it, okay? Right, so one, haven't forgotten it. Plus, right, I'm going to use six because two and three are both factors of six. Um, I know that a half is three sixths and I can see that I've multiplied my three by two, my denominator by two, so I'm going to do that, okay. Right, still got my one, still parked, haven't forgotten about it, and I'm going to add these. Okay. What do you notice here? Well, I notice the seven is bigger than the six. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. It's an improper fraction. So I can't just say I've got one and seven six because a mixed number has to be a whole number and a part, a proper fraction. So the first thing I need to do now is convert my seven sixths into a mixed number. It all flows. There is some logic there somewhere. So. I've still got this one, and I'm still ignoring this one. I've still just got it over to one side. And I know that I need six sixths to make a whole, and I've got one more here. So I've got one and one sixth. Okay, so we're almost there. All we need to do now is bring this one back into play, add it on. If I've got one and a sixth, and I add another one, I'm going to have two and a sixth, and that would be my answer. Now, there are quite a few steps, and it's really important that you're methodical about your workings, because it's really easy just to miss a bit or slip up somewhere. So be really methodical. I'm going to do one more example, because I know these can be tricky. If I can turn my flip chart over. Okay, so one more example, and I'm going to do three quarters plus two and a third. Okay, now, oh, I've written it the other way around. Does that matter? Well, it doesn't because addition's commutative. We've still got to get this two out. So I'm still gonna just take the two separately and I'm going to put it at the start of my calculation. parked. So then I've got my third that goes with my two and I've got my three quarters from there. Okay, so there's my two, there's my third and there's my three quarters. I haven't changed anything, I've just partitioned and altered the order slightly because it's easier for me to see how it's working. Okay, Still got my two, my two still parked up. And this time, I'm going back to using my twelfths, my denominator of 12, and that's four twelfths and three twelfths. I think we've already used that one today. Um, apart from I've got that wrong because three quarters 
a 9 twelfths, aren't they? And if I'd have thought about it and been careful, I've multiplied that by 3 and that by 3. So be very careful in your calculations. OK, I'm going to add them up. I've still got my big 2. And I've now got 13 twelfths. OK, so at this point, my brain's going to go... Uh, uh, improper fraction. So let's change that. We've got 2 and 13 twelfths I know is 1 and 1 twelfth because 12 twelfths is my whole and I've got one more and now I'm just going to add the 2 on. So I've got 1 and a twelfth. If I add on 2 I've got 3 and a twelfth. Okay, lots of steps, but if you follow them sequentially, um, it just keeps you thinking in that logical manner, so you understand exactly what you're doing. Right, any problems, get in touch with me. It's not a problem at all for me to help you, and I'll leave it up to you to crack on. Off you go, guys. Bye.